A lot to cover today, including our plans for preseason, challenges, and game modes. But first, let's talk about the state of the game. Overall, we're pretty happy with the state of league this season. But before we get se ela fosse main mage, não, não gostava de ser do set of the game, né? Into the details, let's dive into a topic that's been pretty popular lately, which is new champion balance. New champion balance. When we look at the data, we actually see that new champions have been pretty balanced on release this year, with the exception of Dr. Mundo. That said, there's more to healthy gameplay than just win rates, and we're still hearing that new champions feel unfair to play against, particularly when it comes to complex abilities or overloaded kits. If we're being é. completely honest, we don't think our champions have overloaded kits overall. But that being said, there have been times when we've given new champions too many tools and had to pull back later to give them more clear weaknesses. Okay. For example, Samira's ability to dash to allies was removed because of Samira broken too champion. Much Combined with her missile blocker, it made see seeing her too difficult, especially since that's one of her main forms of counterplay. Peste, porra. Another thing we consider when we hear a champion feels bad to play against is their intended complexity. We try to make a healthy mix of high, medium, and low complexity champions. In this way, whether you like mechanical skill expression, point and click simplicity, or something in between, there's a new champion that interests you. Natasha Godzug. For example, with Vex, we wanted to create a champion that was fairly easy to pick up, and we're happy to see she's hitting that mark. But beyond just how complex a champion is to play, concordo que a Vex é fácil. Agora não precisam ter cortado as pernas ou a pequena gnoma, não é? There's also how difficult they are to understand. We want new champions to have unique gameplay, but you shouldn't need a wiki to know how to play with or against them. Learning counterplay is a skill test we do think is important, but knowing what a champ can or can't do shouldn't be a part of it. This clarity is something we haven't always hit the mark on, especially with champions like Aphilius, who not only has a complex kit, but was also lacking UI clarity when he was released. Designing new champions a constant it. balance between making something that's exciting, has clear counterplay. O Aphelios não foi nada fácil. Lá, pois lá, lá introduziram as duas armas dele, mas mesmo assim, a maior parte das vezes estou a encontrar Aphelios. Eu sei o que é, um bocado o que é que fazem as armas, mas nem percebo bem os combos, ou se está quase a acabar a munição e passar a próxima arma. Por acaso é, é dos champions visualmente mais difíceis de, do adversário ter uma noção do que é que ele vai fazer. We're still trying to find that line, but we want to get to a spot where our champions aren't flops. just numerically balanced, but that you all feel they're fair to play against. Beyond new champion releases, this season we've seen a wide variety of picks in every role. We've also seen a healthy improvement in diversity of playstyles across roles, especially in jungle and top lane. Mm. Some mm. of this mm. is due to direct champion changes, such as the kit adjustments that enable picks like Jungle Darius, Brand, and Morgana. New items like Anathema's Change and Hullbreaker have also had a positive impact, especially in top lane where we're seeing a ton of champion diversity. And finally, we know that some champion classes have been struggling after the item okay. system update, and we've been working on some solutions to help them out. Okay. And mages. this brings us to our plans for pre mages. With that, I'm going to hand things off to Brightmoon. We'll go more in depth on the upcoming changes. Tá com medo de mages? Precisa. Hey everyone, I'm Brightman, the lead producer Brightman. of gameplay on League of Legends. League is like a house. Sometimes we need to do a big renovation to keep it working well, like when we overhauled the item system. Are you and sometimes we just need to add some new furniture. Are you For this year's preseason. Tipo, eu acho que pronto, esta season houve coisas brokens, coisas não brokens, mas overall acho que foi uma grande mudança uh, o rigor com os itens. E acho que era algo que tipo, em vez de fazer 10 em 10 anos, eu acho que 5 em 5 anos ou 3 em 3, gostava de ver assim um grande rework para o jogo ficar fresco, digamos. Eu tenho que fazer um balanço mais correto, mas, mas gostei, sinceramente. Systems, like items, runes and the elemental rift. Let's start with our plans for items. While some champions and classes have lots of build options, we've still got others that don't feel like they've got a mythic or legendary that really speaks to them. So we're going to be adding some new items and tweaking some others. This will include two new mythic items. The first one is a support tank item, perfect for champions that want to get aggressive and charge into the middle of a fight. Okay. When you immobilize an enemy champion, all nearby enemies will take increased damage from your team. For a short period of time. Ui, isso é um grande item para tank supports, meu. Isto no fundo é, é, é o Abyssal Mask, mas como mythic item. Portanto, quando o Abyssal Mask foi aquele mini rework e buff, e de repente todas, todos os suportes começavam a fazer, não foi todos, mas em competitivo ali uma fase em que os suportes estavam a fazer first item Abyssal Mask, porque aumentava em 15% o damage da equipa toda, mas era só, era, era a todos os targets que tu fazias CC, a todos os targets que tu fazias exatamente. Este novo Mythic Item para suportes, basta dar stun num target 
e toda a gente à volta leva mais damage. Muito bom. Falta ver os números, mas muito bom mesmo. O segundo item de item é construído para mages. Estamos procurando um pouco mais de sobrevivência. Ele grants damage reduction que lingers oh. por um few segundos. Espera aí, ou isto está bugado, ou tal não tem itens, ou o item é broken nos mages. Your team, for a short ou isto é um tal a nível 1. Olha aí. Olha um tal a não dar um one shot num pino. Olha. Olha. Um tal não deu um one shot num pino. You'll also get ability haste. We think it'll be particularly good for longer range mages. We need a mythic that helps them survive and Olha, die vou shot. rather than pile on. Vou quase, mas não vou one shot. When we updated League's item system, we wanted to give every champion strategic choices in every. Imagine, e pelo que ele disse, pelo que ele disse, o item da ability haste enquanto não é para o caso. Portanto, se tiveres o item ativo, que é tipo uma benches, um, quem as ability haste no Zillion. Uh. Miminho, miminho. Só espero que um bom Mythic passive aquele item. Vamos para já, miminho. We still think that's the right goal for Mythics, but our thinking has changed when it comes to legendary items. We think it's okay if some champions build the same legendary in most games, if it's a perfect fit. But we also want you to have plenty of options, which is why we're improving legendaries for mages, assassins, and tanks. For example, assassins can look forward to a new legendary item that gives ability haste. And also refunds a portion of their ultimate's cooldown with enemy takedowns. Ooh, be that clean. Tanks that can never get enough mana will be happy with a new legendary item that grants bonus health based on total mana and also burns some of it to create a shield whenever they immobilize an enemy. Isso é fixe para os tanks. Finally, mages who are tired of being denied their hard-earned kills can rejoice. They'll be receiving a new legendary that grants magic pen against recently shielded enemies. Okay, nice. For runes. We think there are some good targeted changes we need to nice, make. Nice, nice, nice. Most of all, we feel the Inspiration Tree's identity has been pretty unclear. And we'd like to broaden its keystone use cases. Okay. For example, we're reworking Glacial Augment to double down on its fantasy of slowing down enemies. We are also making some modifications to Lethal Tempo. To, for example, ele... we're reworking Glacial... Espera o Glacial, o que é que ele fez? Ele usou o E e o Stanar apareceu o Glacial do, no... dos Glacialzinhos? Please. Will augment to double down on its fantasy of slowing down enemies. We are also making some modifications to okay. lethal working glacial augment to. Isto era fixe fosse também slows. Double down on its fantasy of slowing down enemies. Não só se se. We are also making some modifications to lethal tempo to lean into its attack speed fantasy, and give it a more distinct use case in the precision tree. Lethal tempo. Não dizem que vamos aos quebrões, pá. Champion bounties give teams who are behind. A way to get back into the game without being a straight shot to victory. And this year, we're adding a second way for teams to try and make a comeback. Objective bounties will work like champion bounties, except you cash them in by taking map objectives, Gosto. like towers Gosto. or barrier. They ramp up slowly when the enemy team lead grows. I like this move, for example. I think that having potential of comeback is always good in a game. Imagina que uma equipa adversária está a fazer o. está tipo mega à frente, a tentar um Baron e é um Steel, não fica só com o gol do Baron, mas também com o Bounty do gol do Baron ou do Drake. E principalmente no Drake, dependendo do gol obviamente que vai dar, mas é fixe para haver mais fights. Então, Agora estás também. Você pode compartilhar com o seu time, mesmo que quem o fez. Tomar objetivos realmente é a melhor maneira de voltar quando você está atrás. Então, nós queremos ajudar a fazer isso uma estratégia mais clara e mais rewarding. Isso é dito, se o time está realmente muito fora, os objetivos de bounties não vão mudar isso. Being the better team should always get you a win. So we'll be watching the new bounty system closely to keep things in check. Yeah, we'll Finally, let's talk about yeah. our biggest addition this preseason, dragons. Dragons. We really like how each dragon creates unique terrain, grants powerful buffs, and adds more strategy to the mid and late game. So this preseason, we're adding two more. My dragons. The first is the Hextech dragon. When your team defeats it, you'll all gain additional ability haste and attack speed. Hashtag Dragon, tá bem. Attack Speed Ability Haste. Tá bem, dá para toda a gente isso. Tá bem, tá bem. If you claim the soul, you'll receive a chain slow that works kind of like static shiv's passive. When this dragon Ui. Chain slow. Additional ability haste and attack speed. And if you claim the soul, you'll receive não? a chain slow that works kind of like static shiv's passive. When this dragon takes over the rift, it creates Hextech gates that can transport you to set locations across the map. Okay. The second dragon joining the... 
O quê? Isto é que é mesmo interagir com o mapa, sim. Tipo, os outros, isto, isto aqui realmente interage mesmo com o mapa, com as mudanças do, das outras das shows atuais, nem se sente, nem se sente muito. É um antigo RTX, é, é um bocado, é, é um bocado. Across the map. The second dragon joining the party is Hextech's darker sibling, the Chemtech Drake. Chemtech Drake? When you slay it, your team will deal increased damage when your HP is low, letting you turn around those close team fights. Hmm, pô, ok. Se parece forte só para um Drake normal. Quanto menos vida, mais damage fazes. This dragon soul provides a second chance at life. Well, sort of. When you die, you'll enter a zombie state, where you can still cast abilities and continue fighting, When you'd normally oh, be looking at a green screen. Esta soul parece muito broken. É passiva do Saiyan. Clutch, obrigado pelo pelo tiro, meu bem-vindo. Grande Clutch. This dragon soul provides a second chance at life. Well, sort of. When you die, you'll enter a zombie state. Ui. You can still cast abilities and continue fighting when you'd normally be looking at a gray screen. And when the Chemtech dragon putrefies the map, It creates Sim. camouflage zones and fixed locations. Camouflage? These dragons might seem more impactful than the current ones. And, well, <laughs> they are. Our goal is to add more unique encounter. We'll cast a build. And it's And when the Chemtech dragon putrefies the map, it creates camouflage zones. Camouflage significa que não consegues ver lá para dentro. Agora a questão é, se houver um ward, dá para ver ou não dá para ver? É uma boa questão. Porque não tens de estar sempre feito. É como se fosse tipo, <coughs> tivesse cheio de arbustos e tinhas que passar pelos arbustos para ter visão. fixed locations. These dragons might seem okay, more impactful okay. than the current ones. Flux and, began. Well, Sand they are. The zillion, so. Our goal is to add more <laughs> unique encounters and meaningful strategy to the mid and late game. That said, these are some pretty big changes, and we're ready to adjust if they're making too much, too little of an impact. You can expect to see all of these changes on PBE in a couple of weeks, and we'll be looking for your feedback in the months ahead. Estou curioso para ver no PBE, essas Outside of preseason, something we've heard from all of you is that you'd like more ways to express yourself and your achievements in League. Mm. For some of you, ranked is how you define your progress, and that's great. We don't want to change that. But for those of you who aren't focused on the rate climb, there aren't great ways to express your own progress. Champion Mastery and Eternals help you show off your skills on a particular <sighs> channel, but they don't tell the story of your broader League legacy. The new challenges system should achieve just that. Challenges rank up over time, showcasing your increasing mastery and legacy across a bunch of different systems, modes, and gameplay, making it a little different than just a standard achievement. We want to highlight not just your rank and champion Mais mastery, but also isto, your né? inventiveness, breadth of play styles, collection, and everything else in between. Want to showcase your knack for never dying in ARAM? Or how great you are at killing minions in SR in the mm. first 10 minutes? Maybe you've collected over 100 champions or love participating in events. All of this is now possible to track and display your progress with challenges. Tent leash visual, man. You'll get the first glimpse of challenges when they hit PBE next month. And the full system will launch early next year. How many can't get to the book? That's all I have to share with you today. Thanks so much for watching. And here's Safe Locked again to talk about game modes. Ah, bem. Mas estou curioso para ver os itens e o, e o Drake. When it comes to game modes, one thing we've been hearing from you all is that you'd like more variety in the modes we bring back alongside events. So, let's talk about it. To start, we actually agree that the existing rotation of game modes can make some of the most popular modes like Earth and One for All feel okay, a bit mega speed. Some of you have asked why we just don't bring back some of our other older game modes like Star Wars Invasion or Ascension to mix things up. And the answer mean... is that bringing back old modes isn't as easy as flipping a switch. League is constantly changing, which means all of our existing modes require a constant upkeep. For example, when we released Yumi, we had to figure out how she'd function in one for all. What happens when a Yumi attaches to a Yumi who is attached to a Yumi? Because of upkeep like this, we have to be very selective about the modes we maintain. And right now, there are just too few popular modes that feel worth the investment compared to making brand new modes or updating more resident ones for you. We've mentioned this before, but we think the sweet spot for game modes are ones that amplify champion fantasies and really build on what you love about your champs and summoners rift. So moving forward, we're focusing on adding more game modes to the And to that, let's talk about Ultimate Spellbook. First and foremost, fixe. you all seem to really love this one. It was one of our highest engagement modes Esse ever, second only mesmo. to Earth. Muito and bom. beyond popularity, we're super happy with how long you spent making oversized champions with Chogoth Salt, 
And by that we mean the total amount of time you spent in Ultimate Spellbook stayed high throughout the event. That gives us confidence that it's worth so keeping around. Jogo, aquelas... That said, there so are so some clear areas of feedback that we want to address. Junglers were forced to take Smite and another Ultimate, which meant they couldn't choose another Summoner spell. They also missed out on a lot of exciting plays during the laning phase because they were stuck clearing camps. Beyond that, we also heard that games started to feel a little repetitive due to the small number of available ultimates. Similar. And we agree. So, this winter we'll be bringing back Ultimate Spellbook with a bigger ult pool. We'll also be making nice. some adjustments for junglers to ensure that your experience in Ultimate Spellbook is just as fun as everyone else's. If you'd like Tell to learn more about our game clinch. modes, you can check Get out the dev blog that's coming out today. That's all we have for today. Ascension, Thank you so much for Ascension. watching. We hope you're enjoying Worlds as much as we are. And for any pros watching, once again, please pick a Moo Moo. Please pick a Moo Moo. Tá bem, tá bem, tá bem. Pá, temos aí uns itemzinhos de mages interessantes. Temos aí a mudança do mapa com os novos dois drags. Temos aí um potencialzinho. 